Well, in the grand scheme of things, AI isn't really all that old, but it has already made an enormous impact on the way churches run their day-to-day -day operations. And in this video, we're gonna break down six pieces of AI software that every church needs to use. Consider it your church's new AI tech stack. Let's do this. Well, hey guys, my name is Thomas here from ReachRight, and today we're gonna to be unpacking six of my favorite AI tools that every pastor and church leader needs to be using to save hours and hours every single week. Here at ReachRight, we put out new content like this each and every week. So if this content is helpful to you and your church, it would mean a lot to me if you'd hit that subscribe button and leave a comment down below if you have a favorite AI tool that you use at your church that you couldn't live without. Now let's dig into it. The first tool in my AI tech stack for churches is Opus Clip. This software does something really amazing. It takes your long form content, think like sermon content, and turns it into short form content. Think platforms like TikTok and Instagram and Facebook Reels and YouTube Shorts. And it does all of this through AI without you even having to lift a finger. It really is that easy. If you put your sermons onto YouTube, all you do is you put a link to your YouTube sermon and open Opus Clip does the rest. It formats it to that vertical format that we're all familiar with on those platforms. And get this, it even chooses segments of the sermon that it thinks is best. If you were to load in a 30 minute sermon, you'll probably get about 20 different clips from Opus Clip that are actually just about ready to put right onto social media. Now, let me tell you, not all 20 of them are gonna be bangers. Some of them are gonna actually have some flaws or things you'd think that, well, I probably probably wouldn't put that out there, but you'll usually find two and sometimes three clips that you'd feel really confident about. You'd think this would make a good impression on these platforms. And for most churches, two or three clips every single week is really more than enough. We actually tested this out and we have a full length video I'm gonna link to where you can see exactly our results from a real world scenario with a sermon from a local church there. And the results were kind of mixed, I'd say, but I've seen Opus Clip improving in the week since we've done that video video, and I think you might be impressed by their results. So at a very minimum, it's worth giving it a try just for a few videos you could possibly put onto your social channels. Next up, we have Grammarly. And I imagine a lot of you are already familiar with Grammarly, and when you think about it, you might think, well, is that really an AI tool? Well, yes, it actually is. Maybe you're familiar with it just from what it's always done. It's been a spell check tool to a lot of people, but if you actually sign up for some of their more premium accounts, which I find are very reasonably priced, you get a lot more. It's actually a writing assistant that helps you make decisions to make your writing more easy to understand, more confident, and just gives you a better overall product. For churches, I really love that they have a business plan where you can actually load in your content and style guides as a church. So if you wanna always use a certain kind of voice or you always refer to your church in a certain way, you can make sure that it enforces those style guides on anybody on your team that it's actually writing content for your church. So definitely something to take a look at. The third AI tool is actually another writing tool. It's called the Hemingway Editor or the Hemingway App. I've been using this for years and the thought behind it originally was it helps people write more like Ernest Hemingway, which is usually short and to the point and very easy to understand. But it's evolved and become a more robust AI tool over recent years, and it really serves as a great writing coach to help you write, especially copy. It would be a great tool for churches to use to write your weekly email, where you wanna make sure in the fewest possible words that you have a very clear point, a clear call to action, and drive people to take a next step and it really is a cool tool to do that. Some of the ways that it coaches you is to drop adverbs and to use simpler sentences. One of the ones that I use all the time is it helps me get rid of passive voice, which is really important when you're writing for the internet. At the end of all that, it actually gives you a grade level score. And in general for churches, the lower grade level that we write at, the more approachable our content is gonna be and the better it'll be for most people within our church. So in general, you wanna shoot for around a seventh to eighth grade reading level for most churches. And this tool really makes it easy to do that. 
The fourth tool, and this is probably the most obvious one, the granddaddy of them all, is ChatGPT. The way I think of ChatGPT is it's really great as a brainstorming tool. But before we get any further, I wanna stop and put this out here. We've said this in every video we've put out there where we talk about ChatGPT. Do not use ChatGPT to write your sermons. But there are legitimate uses for churches to be using ChatGPT. In fact, I can think of dozens of them, but let me share three that I'm seeing churches have the most most success with right now. The first one is writing better email subject lines, specifically for your weekly or regular emails that you send out to your entire church. If you're titling those things like weekly newsletter update edition 44 or March newsletter update, you're missing a huge opportunity. And frankly, a lot of people out there are just not gonna open that email. You're always better off to have email subject lines that pique people's interest. And ChatGPT is a great tool for that. Just ask it to give you five subject line ideas for the content you've already written and tell it that you want them to be something that would really have a high click-through rate. ChatGPT is gonna be great at a task like this. Another use for ChatGPT is writing event promos. How often do you have a new event you wanna put onto your website or your church's social media accounts, but you just are out of things to say about that event? Well, let ChatGPT do some of that heavy lifting for you. Ask it to write some content about an upcoming event happening at your church and have it help you spice it up a bit and make it something that sounds more appealing and more engaging to more people. Another thing I really love to have ChatGPT do is to repurpose old old sermons for me. If you're the kind of pastor that preaches from a pretty thorough outline or even better yet, a manuscript, you need to know that that's really actually valuable information that ChatGPT can help you repurpose into new kinds of content. If you have a manuscript from a whole sermon, chances are that it's thousands of words and, and it probably wouldn't play well if you just put it into a blog post, but if you actually loaded that into ChatGPT and you asked ChatGPT to help you get it down to maybe 600 to 800 words, that could be something you could actually put onto your site. It would make a great post on your church's blog. Even better, you can have it put in H2 and H3 heading levels, and it actually has a full functional outline that all you need to do is copy and paste right onto your site. I love it when churches do this, and it's a great way for you to get more content onto your site, which is one of the best ways to drive more traffic to your church. That brings us to AI software number five, and this is a new one that I'm testing quite a bit right now, but so far, I absolutely love it. It's called Fathom. And what Fathom is, is it's a AI note-taking system that you use on your meetings. You know how when you're doing a church staff meeting and you have to designate someone to be the main note taker who's gonna write down what we talked about and take meeting minutes and write down action items? Well, Fathom can actually do all of that for you. It's primarily built around online conferencing software like Zoom and Google Meets. So you'll need to have some kind of a connection to those during your meetings. But just think about the time savings there. I was recently introduced to Fathom during a meeting with another person. And right after that meeting, I got an email in my inbox that had everything that we talked about in bullet summary. And here's what I love the most is it actually had a list of action items at the end assigned to who is actually gonna complete them. I know so many of us at churches are bad at getting these kinds of notes done, especially the action item part. So I think this is gonna be revolutionary for a lot of churches. But if you're like most churches, you probably aren't doing most of your staff meetings only online or in a Zoom conference. Just turn on a Zoom meeting, even if you're not inviting anybody from the outside into it, and it'll still take meeting notes for you. Now we're not sponsored by Fathom or anything, but there's actually a free plan that you can sign up for where you get up to five hours a month of free recording time and meeting notes. And so if you do one hour long staff meeting a week, well, that's probably enough for you to get through a month each month and have these notes at your fingertips. So really something to check out. The last one, and one of my absolute favorites is perplexity.ai. This is a really cool tool. And at first glance, it's gonna feel a lot like ChatGPT. You can ask it questions and have it do things for you. But here's where it really shines is perplexity actually goes to the next level when it comes to finding sources for the information that it's giving you. Here's a couple of things that I could see this being really great for. If you're writing a sermon and you're looking for a quote, you can ask Perplexity to give you a quote on the power of prayer. Now with ChatGPT, it might just make up a quote and it may or may not be valid, but with Perplexity, it'll give you a quote and then it'll give you the exact websites that it used to source that quote. Even better, if you're looking for a great statistic to share with your church, this is where Perplexity is 
is really fantastic. You could ask it a question like, give me statistics on the percentage of people that give to their local church, and it'll give you a few statistics, but it'll be backed up with real sources and where those studies actually came from. So I personally love this because it helps me not have to dig through pages and pages of content to boil it down to the one statistic that I'm looking for. It does all the heavy lifting for me and it gives you the source so you know that it's accurate. These are just some of my favorite tools, but I wanna know what you think. Did I miss one that your church absolutely loves and you really couldn't do life without anymore? Let me know down below. And if you're like me, maybe as you were watching this, you were wondering, maybe I'm not getting all that I can out of ChatGPT. Well, we got you covered there with this video. You need to check this one out.